This is the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program on WVLP 103.1 FM in Valparaiso, Indiana. You're about to hear delayed audio coverage of the Pro Wrestling King event Reach for the Sky from this past Saturday, May 13th in Knox, Indiana. Welcome to the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program. I'm Ken the Metal Professor. I am sitting in the Washington Township Community Center in Knox, Indiana. Knox is sort of Valparaiso's weird little cousin. Fun to drive to, country roads, and I'm not quite used to being out of winter and having the weather be pleasant when I'm driving to these shows because I usually travel about an hour to an hour and a half out of Valpo to get to them. It's a nice drive. That's one of the reasons I enjoy this is going to visit other places. Anyway, I am here in Knox for delayed audio coverage of an event called Reach for the Sky, put on by Pro Wrestling King and others. And my shows go on the radio and also on YouTube. And if you go back and look for some other PWK events recently and pick up the ones from Knox, you can fig- listen to the long-term story that's been going on. And as soon as I started recording, Eric King started talking over the PA system. Thanks, Eric. I guess we're having a pre-show match just to warm up the crowd. But so I'm looking at, you know, a bunch of loose chairs around a ring. There's probably about maybe 80 people in here so far. And then there's a big curtain. And behind the curtain is a setup with two more rings surrounded by a gigantic cage and the main event of this show is going to be a five on five match inside that giant cage structure quiet eric so rude jeez and the winner the winning team of that five on five match will determine who takes control of the company rentawrestlingring.com. Originally, Mr. Ramsey was in charge and then BD Smooth exerted a hostile takeover and has been running the ro- running the show for a while, but Mr. Ramsey has wanted it back. And as always, these things get settled not in the courtroom, but in the ring. Well, you guys don't need to hear about the refreshments and the merch. As Ryan said, this show is dedicated to the memory of Jay Briscoe, thus the name Reach for the Sky. And he pointed out that the actual ring that this show is using was one set up in Chicago for Ring of Honor where Jay Briscoe performed. So that's pretty cool. And as mentioned before, this show is bound to determine control of rentawrestlingring.com and they are like uh, you know whatever Tony Soprano's organization was called in that show I don't remember but rentawrestlingring.com is the version of that for rings in the northwest Indiana area and also reaching into Chicago and south into farther Indiana and lower Michigan it's a regional powerhouse 
Okay, so while I've been talking, Ryan's been talking, and it looks like maybe more than just two people are going to get introduced for this match, so I'm just going to wait and see what's up. This first match is a triple threat match for the Pro Wrestling King Heritage Championship, currently held by Rick Vidal. His two opponents... Uh, are unknown to me. I believe one was introduced as Akeem and another one who came out first has glossy tights, very shiny, and a shiny lucha mask. I'm gonna, you know, it's it's hard to hear and hear, and I sound like a doofus when I don't know who any of these people are, and I sound like a doofus anyway, but you know, why compound the error? I might go see what kind of cachet I have in these parts and see if uh, Ryan Anderson will let me take a picture of his run sheet so that I can get some names right. We'll see. It looks like Rick Vidal has retained his PWK Heritage Championship. I will say that Ryan Anderson is a, is a true saint, and he did allow me to peek at his run sheet so I can get the names right. So with Rick Vidal had been Gran Trueno and Abdul Hakim, and at the end of the match, Prince Abdul Hakim with a big frog splash off the top rope, uh, but he bounced off a little bit. Vidal came and pushed him aside and got the pin himself. There's a nice little sportsman-like handshake between Vidal and Gran Trueno. Waiting to see if, uh, you know, there's shenanigans. But no, they, uh, they part friendly. That's always fun. Anyway, Rick Vidal, your PWK Heritage Champion. Scotty Young is the first person out for the next match with his uh, agent, <coughs> Beck Swisher, and Scotty yanks the microphone away from Ryan Anderson, hands it to Beck. He always has something to say. Eventually, Ryan got to do a proper introduction for Scotty Young. Scotty Young claimed he was the best. You know, I'm looking, and I don't what I, he doesn't have one of those things around his waist. What's that called? Uh, a, a belt? Title? Here comes a scary-looking gentleman as his opponent. Ace Evans. So with the mask and the bald head and the long beard, he's kind of got um, 
Now I'm totally drawing a blank. The guy in Bray Wyatt's cohort for a few years ago, not Luke Harper, the other guy with the beard. Red hair, red beard. Kind of got that vibe going on. This match is officially started. As A7's slams Scotty Young's head into the turnbuckle 10 times with counting. Oh. And there's 10 punches to Scotty Young. He was facing towards me. I'm kind of far away from the ring. The front of his shirt has a wolf drawing on it. And so now I think uh, the mask that he came out with to the ring, which he only had on for a few seconds, was a wolf mask. When I first saw it, I was from the side. They had pointy ears and a snout, and I was like, oh, pig mask. You know, like crazy country bearded guy kind of thing. But I, it's a follow-away slam from Ace Evans onto Scotty Young, and Scotty Young bails out of the ring immediately and is uh, comforted by Beck Swisher. Now Evans is following outside the rings, comes up behind Scotty Young, clobbers him over the shoulders, slams his head into the apron. Big chop to the chest, and Scotty rolls back into the ring to escape the damage from outside the ring. Oh, Beck Swisher with a two-handed chop to the back of Ace Evans, which uh, he kind of brushed off quickly. Now he's chasing Swisher. And Scotty Young takes advantage by rolling out of the ring on the opposite side, running up behind Evans, and then throwing him into a turn into a ring post. And now he's got him in the ring, stomping on him. And Ace Evans has learned that you need to have eyes in the back of your head in a scenario like this one. Beck Swisher with some uh, second-level thinking, perhaps, handed Scotty Young a gold chain from outside the ring, well within sight of the ref. So as Scotty was bandishing the chain as if he was going to slug Ace Evans, the ref reached out, grabbed it from his hand, and went over to the corner to set it out of reach. While he was approaching the corner, Beck Swisher then threw a handful of powder into the face of Ace Evans, who was close to the ropes, which blinded him for a second, and Scotty Young used that chance to roll him up for a pin. Our third match is a tag team match. Spark of Madness, the RCW Tag Team Champions. Now those titles are not on the line in this match. They are taking on Dirty Nasty, who I haven't seen before. One gentleman looking straight out of Duck Dynasty. And another one looking straight out of like uh, in Letter Kenny, what did they call the, you know, the, the, the emo type guys that would hang out in front of the convenience store? That's what he looks like. Travesty is the first one to uh, approach for action for his team. I don't know what it is, but Travesty has this. Uh, this magnetism that kids in particular really uh, are gravitating towards. And he gets a good buzz from the crowd when he comes out. The whole, the, both the team, both of them, Travesty and Sean Sparks do. Travesty just picked up Sean Sparks, his own partner, and dumped him on top of one of the two members of Dirty Nasty. Did not 
didn't get the pinfall. He must not have thrown him hard enough. The Duck Dynasty member of Dirty Nasty has a bandana on his head that says Nasty. So I'll just call him Nasty and I'll call the other one Dirty. Sean Sparks has a lot of energy in the ring. He's very active. If you remember, I don't think, I don't know that these are a kid's toy anymore, but when I was a kid, you know, back in the last century, we all had these, these little ball popping rollers. It was like a little dome, plastic dome on wheels with a handle that came up so you could push it kind of like a vacuum cleaner as a kid. And it had little mechanisms in it that would pop little plastic balls around inside the clear plastic dome, just pop, 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 as you were rolling it. They would just bounce all over the place inside that little dome. Watching Sean Sparks is like watching those balls going pop, 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 pop around in the ring, just never stopping, bouncing from here to there. Except for right now when he's laying on the mat being stomped on by Nasty. So he's not doing a lot of bouncing at the moment, but when he gets going, it is very much like that. Sparks was taking punishment for quite a while. He finally got to tag in Travesty. The crowd's very happy about that. Travesty is very happy about that. Sean Sparks is the most happy because he's not getting beat on anymore. That was a big belly-to-belly -belly suplex from Travesty onto Nasty, and Nasty's partner has jumped in and gotten on top of Travesty's back. The referee is just kind of like, eh, whatever. No, oh, maybe there was a tag somehow in there. Now, Dirty has found himself in the claw from Travesty. Sean Sparks is climbing the ropes to the top. No tag. Travesty just kind of waved at him and said, come on in. Frog splash by Sean Sparks. And there it is. Spark of Madness with the win. The chant of bubbles is directed at Chad Nails. He's expressing his love for the crowd. He's accompanied by Letter Rip. As Ryan Anderson explained during the introduction, this is the uh, king of nothing match. Chad Nails is the king of nothing because he has 41 consecutive losses. And I think he loses because he's so tired from talking so much when the match starts. He's got no endurance. His opponent is going to be Jamar Jupiter. Should get a good reaction from the crowd. You are listening to the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program on WVLP 103.1 FM in Valparaiso, Indiana. Up to this point, except for a couple of cheap shots, Chad Nails has been totally outclassed by Jamar Jupiter. Jupiter was going up to the top turnbuckle in the corner when Letter Rip ran around from the side and jiggled the ropes, making him fall in the old uh, straddle the ropes position. And Chad Nails took that opportunity to pick him up. 
in a headlock type position and then slam him down on the mat. But he only got a two count out of that. And Jamar Jupiter's uh, tactical advantage seems to have vanished. Chad Nails actually got a two count on Jupiter. But he did kick out. And then Chad Nails stood up and uh, drew the ref's attention towards the opposite side of the ring. Chad was pointing at somebody in the crowd, expressing that he was up to no good, trying to get the ref to do something about it while the ref was distracted. Let a rip snuck in and attacked Jupiter. And now Chad Nails has a groggy Jupiter in the corner, flings him into the opposite side of the ring. And, you know, normally where somebody would sort of dive forward and shoulder into the ring post, he just kind of <laughs> went through the ropes and continued to the floor. Let her rip his cackling. And now the ref is counting both men out. Nope, wait, Chad, Mail, Chad Nails is still on the mat in the middle of the ring. And Jupiter got back in. And tried to pin Jupiter when Jupiter was too close to the ropes. Only got a one count before Jupiter stuck his leg towards the ropes to break the count. Chad Nails flung Jupiter towards the opposite turnbuckle. This time, Jupiter successfully somersaulted up and around onto his feet in the ring. Attack Nails was about to get a three count when Letter Rip grabbed Jupiter's ankles and yanked him out of the ring off the pinfall. Now Jupiter has all of his attention focused on Letter Rip, which is a bad idea. And the ref was starting to do the wind up to kick Jamar Jupiter out of ringside and send him to the back when Chad Nails just slugged the ref. The travesty came out from the back. Grabbed Letter Rip from behind. He is making off with Letter Rip and taking him back through the curtain leaving Nails alone with Jupiter. A second ref is now coming to the ring. Chad Nails had actually successfully pinned Jupiter, but this new ref, after just counting two, just pulled up off the count. Gave Chad Nails the middle finger and just slugged him. And now Jupiter with an elbow strike to the back of Nails' head. Jupiter's up on the turnbuckle with a moonsault back into the ring. That's the three count for Jupiter. And to finish this up, Ryan Anderson just announced that with a record of 0-42, Chad Nails remains the king of nothing champion. And on his way out of the ring, the other ref low blows Chad Nails from behind. That'll teach Chad Nails to pick on people outside the ring when he's getting ready for his match. Well, Ryan Anderson has introduced the two opponents in the next match, Javen Myra and James Fury. They're in the ring, there's no ref. <laughs> Finally, one comes out from the back. The two were sports about it. Did not uh, 
have any physical contact while there was no ref in the ring. Now well, they're locking up collar and elbow and just kind of rolling each other around through the ropes through the turnbuckles. And on, on the release, James Fury smacked Jaden Myra. So far in the show, we've had silliness, we've had cheating, tag team shenanigans, all sorts of things. This between Javen Myra and James Fury is probably the most pure strength on strength, just straight up match we've had so far. Nobody's around the ring for interference. Neither guy wants to be silly. Oh, Javen Myra just took a dive through the ropes at Fury, who was standing on the apron, and took them both down to the floor up against the barricade. And the ref is counting at both men because they're outside the ring. Fury's back in. Myra's not, and he's the one that did the dive. Okay, he got back into. Fury is chanting one more time, one more time after a big blow to Myra. And that overconfidence is usually the downfall. And Myra did get a spinning takedown on Fury, but uh, both of them are kind of groggy after that. So the ref is counting at both men again. Ooh, Myra with a clothesline that basically turned Fury inside out. He flipped him up and around 360 degrees. Followed with a pin attempt, but not for three. Myra is uh, pulling Fury, a groggy Fury, to his feet. Picks him up. Oh, like for a cradle DDT. And there it is. Right on the noggin. And that's three for Javen Myra. Avery Hertz was the winner of that match. I wasn't a witness because I had to go to the bathroom and it wasn't gonna wait until intermission. Plus, it's a very, very tiny bathroom, so you kind of have to pick your moment, you know what I mean? I guess we could call this the semi-main event. It's the last match before intermission and before the big War Games match. It is for the PWK Heavyweight Championship. Eric Surge is out first. He always injects a burst of energy into the room when he comes out. A surge of energy, you might say. Last time I was here in Knox for PWK, uh, Josh Morris won the PWK championship uh, through shenanigans. And again, you can uh, revisit history by finding the NWI Rap, NWI WRAP YouTube channel and checking back an episode or two. 
listen to what happened at that last event. I believe it was in February. Eric Surge outweighs Josh Morris by a bit. And Josh did not come out with his usual hype man. So either uh, something sketchy is afoot for him to appear later, or Morris might feel himself at a disadvantage without that extra help from the outside. That smack was Eric Surge introducing the palm of his hand to the chest of Josh Morris. Josh Morris has just been strutting around the ring, running his mouth. Surge waited patiently for a while and then said, all right, let's get on with this thing. And now he's tossing Morris around like a rag doll. Yanked him back into the ring with a pull of the ropes. Questionable physics in action, but it always works. <laughs> Eric Surge decided he had enough of Josh Morris. Went on the attack pretty strongly, but uh, as he dove into the corner at Morris, Morris ducked out of the way. And then Morris came up from behind with a neck breaker. So he actually has the advantage right now on Surge. Morris dove towards Surge from the top turnbuckle. Surge just caught him, lifted him up onto his own shoulders in a fireman's carry, but Morris started doing elbow strikes from that upwards position, which stunned Surge. Morris just with a drop kick off of the top turnbuckle to Surge for a two count. And a good stomp in the gut for good measure. Morris is jawing a lot, but he's backing it up. The surge is down. Morris has announced to the crowd with a lot of talking that he's going up for a saucy splash. Taking all that time gave Surge a chance to come to his feet. Morris is seated on the top turbuckle facing into the ring. Surge is now up to the second rope for a suplex position. Surge on the second rope. Morris from the third, and they both come down. And neither one is in a position to try a pinfall at this point. And Surge just hit Morris with a Sit down power slam, a lot of power behind it. To his credit, Morris kicked out after two. Staggered to his feet, Surge was about to attack again when Morris rolled out through the ropes to the floor. I, I can't see Morris overpowering Surge too much, so Okay, what the heck? Oh, Morris grabbed his bat. He comes to the ring with an aluminum bat. And while the ref was distracted disposing of the bat, Morris grabbed his title belt, blasted Surge in the head with it, but only got like two and three quarters of a count there. I imagine Morris is going to have to get himself disqualified to walk out of here with the title. Oh, 
Morris came at Surge with the belt again. Surge picked him up for a slam. For a three count, and Eric Surge. Eric Surge is. Uh-oh. We thought Surge won, but the ref is saying that it was only a two count. Even Ryan Anderson got fooled. So the match has restarted. This is kind of strange. Morris thought he had a three count on Surge, but Surge's hand is on the ropes. The ref has uh, called for the bell and has handed the belt to Morris. This is all very confusing because Eric Surge's hand is distinctly on the ropes. Maybe this ref is on Morris's payroll while Morris's hype man is absent. Well, regardless, Josh Morris is still the champ one way or the other. And it is intermission time. Everybody will be going for yummy meatball subs and pizza, and they'll be taking down the curtain to reveal the double cage monstrosity around the pair of rings on the other side of the room. As a reminder, you're listening to the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program on WVLP 103.1 FM in Valparaiso, Indiana. This is delayed audio coverage of the Pro Wrestling King event, Reach for the Sky, coming from Knox, Indiana. The live event happening on May 13th. I'm recording it and bringing you highlights, you know, a few days later. So intermission, and they're tearing down the ring that all the first half action took place in. They've dropped the curtain to the other side of the room where there is a big cage surrounding a pair of rings for a War Games match. Fighting for control of RentaWrestlingRing.com, the BD Smooth Team, Dub City versus the Knights Men fighting for Mr. Ramsey. So I think once the original ring is out of the way, people are going to scoot their chairs way up towards the other monstrosity. I will still be stuck here because I can't move my whole table. Maybe I will just I'll have to stand up and watch the action from back here. We'll see.
alone now because after they actually dismantled and took away the first ring, dropped the curtain, revealing the big double cage thing, and allowed everybody to get their chairs and slide them all forward. Now, I've got a table with a mixing board and my computer, so I can't slide all my stuff forward that easily. So now it's me with this giant open floor space, and then the chairs, and then the ring. But I actually have a, you know, it's a good view. It's just kind of far away. I hope the uh, explanation by Ryan Anderson of the War Games match was audible because uh, I'm not going to repeat it all. But eventually it's going to turn into a five on five melee until somebody gets pinned or submitted. First two into the ring are Utah Americano on the Knights Men team and Kevin Storm fighting for Dub City and BD Smooth. They will go at it for two minutes until the next person enters. You could hear the crowd counting down. Ah, Kevin Storm ripped the mask off of Yuta Americano, and I believe it revealed Daniel Starks. The next entrant is Nelson Edward Robert Doolittle the fifth, Nerd the fifth. Kevin Storm looks a little puzzled about uh, Starks being on the opposite team now that the mask is off. Nerd comes in and blasts Kevin Storm from behind and Kevin Storm is fighting at a disadvantage for the next two minutes. A quick interruption from the headquarters of the massive WVLP studios in Valparaiso, Indiana. For broadcast purposes, this recap needs to come in at under an hour, and so I needed to clip out a couple of minutes. And since the War Games match doesn't officially begin until all 10 men are in the ring, uh, I've clipped a little bit out from the time where people are entering every two minutes. So when the count of people or the names of people suddenly changes, you've passed the place where I had to clip something. Hopefully it wasn't anything terribly exciting. Also, apologies for adding the extra S to the name of Daniel Stark during the show. I missed the counting down for the next entrant. The odds are even back up right before the next up the next uh, combatant came out. Nerd the fifth climbed almost up to the top edge of the cage and then dove onto Kevin Storm. It's pretty uh, adventurous of him. I don't know who the fourth person into the ring is. It was supposed to be 70s rock star Gigi Jacobs. But instead, it's uh, somebody with a kilt. So at the moment, it's 2-1-2 two two between Dub City and the Knights Men. This is not a battle royal. People are not being eliminated. So you've got... Daniel Starks, who had played the role of Utah Americano, Kevin Storm, Nerd the Fifth, and New Guy. They're in it for the duration. And this is trouble for Kevin Storm and his partner because Brutus Dillon is coming to the ring. And he's uh, picking up a couple of chairs and throwing them in along the way. 
Ref Donovan is waving his arms, asking him please not to do that. You can imagine how well that's going. Oh, and there is a ladder as well. Now the goal is not to escape the cage. In fact, if you escape the cage, your team loses. So ladders are only for punishment. And here comes an unfinished door. The rule is, since Brutus put it in the ring, he is the one that will go through it. We'll see if that holds up. Well, the first thing Dylan did once he finally got in there was throw a chair into the face of Kevin Storm. So the Knights men are uh, sort of having their way at the moment. Kevin Storm and his partner, Kilt Man, are just down and out. Now the odds are about to even up again. We'll see who's coming next. And the new entrant evening it up 3-3 is Gio Bronco. A headbutt to somebody. Oh! Whacked Brutus Dillon with a chair. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure I see those in the waveforms in Audacity while I'm recording this. You know it was a good strike when you can see it on the screen. But Nerd just blasted Bronco with a drop kick through a chair. And then Dylan whacked him with another chair. Now Kevin Storm is rehabilitated and he's going after Nerd. Meanwhile, Daniel Starks is getting attacked by Kilt Man with the ladder. And I apologize to Kilt Man that I just didn't hear his entrance name and I have no idea who it is. Someday I'm sure I will. And here comes Idol Hines. And his head is drop kicked from both directions by Kevin Storm and Kilt Man. Bronco threw a chair at Brutus Dillon's head. Dillon and Hines are trapped in, in the middle bar of the square figure eight, in between the side-by-side -side ropes of the two rings. They make like a little channel between the two rings and they couldn't get out for a while because they were getting blasted from both sides. Two more entrants left to go. It's like Idle Hines is trying to suplex Dark Shadow, an actual wrestling move, a suplex in the middle of this. Let's see, a door is being set up in a corner again. Something must have happened because part of the door has been splintered. Ryan Anderson just counted down for the next entrant. I think we're down to Mr. Ramsey and BD Smooth. Seems like the age of wrestling to use 80s music for entrance music. You get Jefferson Star, yeah, Jefferson Starship and Kansas being used in AEW. And here comes Mr. Ramsey to Journey. And he's uh, walking around the outside of the ring instead of getting in it. I believe he's carrying a crowbar. Ref Donovan is, like with the doors, waving at him like, you are not supposed to do that. By process of elimination, the next one to come out is BD Smooth. Mr. Ramsey never entered the cage. He's just been pacing around the outside. I think he's just waiting for BD Smooth. Oh, and 
Now the BD Smooth has showed up. Mr. Ramsey has gone into the cage with his crowbar. Now BD Smooth past the door to the cage. Maybe he's gonna do a full circuit before he decides to get in, or he's confused. Mr. Ramsey just bonked one of the uh, opponents. Kiltman, I think, with his crowbar. NERD has climbed up, standing on the top rope, looking out over the cage towards the audience. There are eight people in one ring. BD Smooth and Mr. Ramsey are together in the other ring. Now that 10 are in the ring, the match has officially started. And now it's just up to a pinfall or a submission. Smooth and Ramsey are circling each other in the ring they have alone. Ugh, Mr. Ramsey is taking off his shirt. This is a family show, come on. I mean, with people beating each other with chairs is a family show. And Mr. Ramsey and Mr. Smooth have finally locked up. Ramsey has Smooth in an arm bar. And now it's been reversed. Brutus Dillon is earning his pay. He was the first one to come out of the crowded ring and go over to the, uh, the duo in the other ring and attack BD Smooth. Now Dillon's grabbing one of the doors that he brought in earlier. Or maybe it's even a brand new door. It's like a bifold door. Listen to me with the hardware lingo. That was Kevin Storm whacking, uh, who was it? Daniel Starks. <laughs> I was right. Gio Bronco just speared Brutus Dillon through a door. One of the ones that Brutus Dillon brought into the ring. Kevin Storm is uh, playing with a ladder. And does he still have Starks over there up against the ladder? Yep. Bronco has climbed up to the top turnbuckle in one of the two rings. With a big elbow drop onto Dylan. That was the, I believe that was the first attempted pinfall. Idle Hines broke it up. Not only did Mr. Ramsey take off his shirt, he's taken off his shoes too. And, ugh, I'm glad I'm far away from the ring. There have been a couple of pinfall attempts. Nothing final. But that slam was Brutus Dillon giving a choke slam to Dark Shadow. And if that Mr. Ramsey's team has won war games, and if that means Mr. Ramsey takes back control of rentawrestlingring.com, well, all the employees say goodbye to your Christmas bonuses because Scrooge is back in town. I'm not sure what the fallout from this will be, but uh, yeah, stay tuned to Facebook ProWrestlingKing.com. Keep up to date on the next PWK show, which I believe Ryan said is here in Knox.
Oh, and now a couple of the well, the uh, Kings men team have BD Smooth handcuffed to the inside of the cage. He's busted open, bleeding from the forehead. Idle Hines just picked up a referee. With an F5 down onto the mat. You know, the refs have done their business and they're not needed anymore. So I guess, you know, whatever happens, happens. Looks like Mr. Ramsey is calling off the boys, though. Oh, and I think Mr. Ramsey was saying enough was enough for the people on his team brutalizing BD Smooth, and they didn't take kindly to that, and they've whacked Mr. Ramsey in the back with a chair. Brutus Dillon did that. And Brutus with a punch to the other ref. Oh, Idle Hines with a naked chair shot to the head of BD Smooth. Brutus Dillon is one angry man, and he's asked for the microphone. We'll see if it picks up here. Whoops, <laughs> they were sending Dark Shadow into a door, and it kind of he kind of missed, so we didn't hear a good crunch. Maybe this time will be better. Take two. That was a little better. I totally forgot about Mitchell Taylor. Why isn't he here? And so that sets up a showdown at Three Rings of Doom in Bourbon, Indiana. Coming up later this summer, Mr. Ramsey and BD Smooth will be back on the same page, taking on Brutus Dillon and Mitchell Taylor. That is a wrap from Reach for the Sky here in Knox, Indiana. I'm Ken the Metal Professor of the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program. Thanks for listening if you made it this far. Delayed audio coverage on WVLP 103.1 FM in Valparaiso, Indiana.